Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining the session. My name is Om Prakash Pandey. And this session is about Microsoft Copilot on Power Platform. Before we deep dive into this session, I'm sure everyone is aware about the core foundations of Microsoft Power Platform. Just to quickly run through some of the core components over here. Microsoft Power Platform is a low code, no code solution. And this has been there in the industry for last five to six years. Not that it was called Power Platform initially. These components have been enhanced over a period of time. Initially, we had Power BI, Microsoft Flow, which is now called as Power Automate. Later came Power Apps, Microsoft Power Virtual Agent, which is now renamed as Microsoft Copilot Studio. Along with this, the core foundations in the back end lies with Power Platform admin environment, where we can configure rule based access control, create appropriate environments for product, production, test, sandbox. There are a large set of pre existing data connectors which can help us extract data and map them to the underlying Dataverse environment. Along with this, we have AI Builder. And the most important aspect is Microsoft Entra ID, which is a new name for Azure Active Directory, focusing on identity management. Keeping this context in mind, let's go back to our today's session. The most exciting aspect of this session would be various resources that helps us to understand about what is this co-pilot all about and application of this co-pilot within Power Automate, within Power Apps, Power Virtual Agents, which is Copilot Studio. And finally, we'll look at some of the examples of AI Builder and its integration with GPT. As part of the session, I'll be sharing some of the critical resources with you all. We'll be doing some of the labs here. So that along with the knowledge that you are gaining, you all should also have relevant hands on experience on each of these areas. So let's get started. What is this co-pilot all about? Copilot is a name which is given by Microsoft from perspective of how one can enhance the productivity tools and make sure they can be made available to large set of audiences without having them to create any kind of models or train those models, right? And especially once it comes to industry specific resources or environment specific resources, how can one leverage on these aspects over here? If you look at need for Copilot, this is one of the recent technology which is emerging using Gen AI, Chat GPT. People have already used some of the core aspects over here. And like I mentioned earlier, how do we make it part of the low code, no code solution platform like Power Platform?
So here, if you look at Microsoft Power Platform, it has already proven its worth. It has already proven its benefits as compared to the traditional development methods with faster development timelines, lower cost, greater collaboration between end users and technology experts, and major role is being placed played by business analysts because they are the ones who know the technology lesser, but they know the domain much better. And with their guidance, right? We can go and create business processes and keep enhancing them, keep updating them as per the industry requirements. If you look at the global market today for low code development, it is projected to reach 26.9 billion in year 23. And we are already in year 24 today while I'm recording the session. There has been 20% increase from year 22. And going ahead, it will increase in more leaps and bounds. If you look at the quick understanding of Copilot, this focuses on reinventing software development using artificial intelligence, using pre-existing large language models, also called as LLMs. So when a non-developer who has been working with various productivity tools like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, how they can go ahead and leverage on benefits of Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Virtual Agents, how do we add these resources there and create innovative solutions using the natural language? That is something which is a key for this environment. If you imagine your solution over here, the normal English language or a lang language that we speak, right? We can quickly create resources based on that. In a way, we can select from multiple templates which are available. We can have a right set of resource for us, closely mapping to our requirement, closely mapping to our expectations, and we can build members over here. Using this co-pilot, we can accelerate the development for citizens and change the life of professional developers. Some of y'all may be even worried about what happens to ALM, what happens to SDLC. Not to worry on that. Even while using Copilot, we can align those resources and take help of those members as well. With Power Platform Copilot, here we can have new AI powered tools that makes it easier to build our apps. And like I mentioned, it can be done by using simple English like language. And if you see one of the example here, I want an app to track inventory of my store. And what Copilot would do is it will create appropriate model, a dataverse set of tables for inventory management and an app which can help us perform similar kind of action. I, I don't want to get into the Power App details as of now, but as we go ahead, I will show you the relevant examples of the same of how we can do something like this within Power Automate, within Power Apps, and Power Virtual Agents as well. An important aspect over here is making use of large language models, which are industry specific, which are domain specific, and we can proceed ahead with implementation of the same. This is something which is not built in a day. And as the statement goes, room was not built in a day. 
same thing holds true for copilot and other resources as well so starting from 2019 where microsoft started infusing artificial intelligence within power platform by using ai builder which went ahead with power fx formulas usage of dax queries within power bi as part of year 22 where microsoft integrated natural language flow using power automate power apps you had image and figma as pre existing apps available so even while ai was not directly supported we microsoft made it possible using third party apps as time moved by we had power virtual agents as conversation boosters enhancement of ai builder using azure open ai with pre existing models templates right so initially we had only one or two entities that is image processing invoice processing right there were a lot of other tools which other templates which kept getting added within ai builder as a environment if you look at the latest model which was available 3.16.23 right year 2003 march here we had more details being added from perspective of natural language to bot that is copilots and these copilots were also introduced in power apps and power automate as well if you look at each of the members over here especially once it comes to power apps here we can describe our applications purpose we have a auto generated data table right along with this you you can go and update the fields if you want the type of columns which have which would have got created right so we can modify that as well but more or less the entire road map that is needed to build that app is ready for us and this is in minutes i would say uh, this is in seconds i would say and while building this app since it uses a natural language processing we don't have to be a great professional or having great knowledge of ui ux even a normal person who is not from that background can do that because here we don't have to focus too much on complex coding components or other integrations that is required for it if you look at the copilot within power automate this is where we can specify what kind of process we would want to create and similar to power app here also you will get your power app created specific to a particular domain related to a specific area that one would want and this dynamically reduces this dynamically reduces the time taken for creating these members going to power virtual agents which is now called as copilot studio as part of this member believe me when i started my journey with power virtual agents creating those terms creating those phrases right it was it was pretty hectic and i did always expected that what if microsoft gives pre existing set of op, uh, terms right and op, and the statements which i can import from somewhere rather than going to dot net and writing code for it or uh, training my own model if i can get it from somewhere pre existing say 80% of it i can modify the remaining 20% tune it as per my organization right that is what this copilot studio gives me it focuses on 
usage of generative AI. You can import a lot of pre-existing topics, refine them through natural language, and build your complete chatbot solutions at, at, at a much, much, much faster pace. And that's what has added value to the entire organization today. If you look at the diagrammatic understanding of how this co-pilot works, I think this diagram would make sense for you all. So we have Microsoft 365 co-pilot, which is appended to various productivity tools. Please be careful. We'll have to purchase a specific license for it. Microsoft 365 Copilot license. We can. It is. Associated with Microsoft Graph and what we can do is we can create Word documents. Send messages, create appropriate content that you'd want. Using the generative AI as a resource. Now all these conversation that we are creating. This is all backed up by pre configured large language models, which can also be referred as base models for a given domain. If we go into more details of this. From a processing point of view, this is how it happens. Here you have options of prompt engineering. We can have pre existing prompts or we can have modified prompts, which in the back end is using Azure Open AI as its key resource. Right? These are pre programmed large language models given by Microsoft. If you look at the way how this Copilot works. As far as end user is concerned, end users would interact with the application in a more natural language way, language which is easier for them to understand. Say so things like what is our average monthly sales number, top five products that we sold in the last year. And some of these things you all must have seen or tried out by using Power BI DAX queries. Right? Now, same set of experience we can also get within other Power Platform tools, extracting information, retrieving details, creating new set of apps and process flows. And while doing all these steps, it becomes easier for us to avoid any kind of challenges, avoid any kind of issues or problems that one can face. Because most of these aspects are pre generated by Microsoft in the back end, where we can go and modify or tune those resources. So since we are talking about business process flows, let me showcase the first reference link available within the Microsoft environment. So first one that you see is Copilot in Power Platform for desktop. Now some of them you all would see as Preview right now. Microsoft still is gathering feedback from various people, developers, end users, right? Understanding how they can enhance and improve on each of these areas, right? So, this is the first link which I will be sharing with you all. And if you all see the details here, Right. So what is the task or action that one would want to perform? Popping instance details from Excel. 
Now, once it comes to your co-pilot pane, we can check for any specific questions that one would want. Right, so here if you see on right hand side, here you can generate set of resources, ask whichever questions or details that one would want. Right. Now what this would help us do is if we are making any kind of mistakes or if there is any challenge anywhere, we can rectify that. Along with this here, if you see on the left hand side, we have AI builder as a entity available that can be added within our flow, right? So it's not just while development we are using it, but even while we are executing this flow, right? Whatever data is being given, we can add it over here, get the response from it, and based on that, dynamically we can perform set of tasks over here. Okay. So this is the first one from perspective of Power Automate for desktop. How we can create resources or work with these members within our on-premises environment. Let's proceed ahead. So once it comes to your Power Automate Copilot, one of the important things that one can do is we can describe the workflow using a natural language processing in a conversational language. And Copilot will help us get the automated flow created for us. Now, as of now, since Microsoft has been mentioning it about as a preview, most of these cases you'll see it helps us create simpler workflows, sim simpler uh, processes over here, right? If you want complex processes or complex flows, this may take some time to build these kind of complex flows. But as of now, simpler fo flows or static, static, uh, starting points that one would want that can be generated using Power Automate Copilot. If you look at the actions over here, the core actions over here is understanding the intent that you are creating, right? Creating a flow based on the scenario or the prompt that we provide. And here, even what I like about it is it sets up the connections quickly. We just have to uh, go and add our details, which particular uh, email address or which particular specific information we want to provide to tune it or make sure the final connection is being established. Say, for example, we are using SQL Server. Okay, SQL Server is a connector. So for that SQL Server connector, what would be the connection string? What would be the uh, credentials, right? So those things we'll have to mention. But apart from that, everything else is already being created for us. <laughs> I would say the low code, low code solution is made even more simpler by taking it to the to the next level altogether. I have already shared the first link with you all that is getting started with Copilot in Automate Desktop. Another important place where one can use this Copilot is through process mining, right? And I'm sure everybody who has been working with creating set of recordings, right? Recording of the existing process or application that we have. How do you tune it? What is the better way or faster way of executing that? Along with that, if you have any log file content based on the format which is being given by Microsoft. If you provide that information, if you provide that details, it can guide us of how this process mining or how, how the process can be enhanced over here. Right? 
So if you see some of the core details, confirm the process, do the execution over here. And within your process mining, you have your co-pilot steps that we can add over here. I'll share the link with you all so you can try out the same steps within your environment as well. Let me quickly show you a demo over here. How do we create a approval flow with Copilot in Power Automate? Before that, let's log in into our environment over here. Let me take a private window. Guys, in your case, if you'll have if you already have an organization account with Copilot, you all can use that. Another way is you all can use Microsoft Developer Program to create a new tenant. And after you have done that, then go and get a free license for Power Apps and Power Automate. Okay. Let me go to make dot power automate dot com. Let me log in using my. Developer program credentials. Just give me a moment. Let me. Provide the authentication details here. So here I go. I have successfully logged into my environment. Just give it a moment. So once it gets loaded, Right, so here you can see. Details regarding. Automate desktop RPA. Here we can see. The core details that we were mentioning earlier. Usage of generative AI features. In my case, I already have multiple environments being created earlier. Sorry, guys, I'm not discussing about environments and other aspects of our platform. I'm safely assuming that all of you are already aware about these core aspects. So I hope you all can see this over here. So once I go to my environment. Every month copy all files from one drive to another one drive folder. Copy all rows from Excel to another Excel with click of a button. Create a new item in SharePoint. When a new item is created in SharePoint, send me an email. So you can pick up any one of the. Pre existing members or you can go and Type whatever scenario that you would want. Say I want to create a retail flow, a specific business flow that I would want. And based on whatever details you have mentioned. It will automatically create a flow for you. Right, and this is what is referred as. Natural language processing. And this is what I mentioned earlier. So once you have successfully logged in. Go and specify your credentials. Or your domain or it could be any other environment that you would want. Click on create flow. Can you see this? 
So on right hand side. Add a record in SQL table. Right, so it says. This is what one is to do over here. Set these connections. So go to SharePoint. Add a SQL Server details over here. What kind of authentication that one would want? Say I want SQL Server authentication. So once you provide these steps over here and click on create, it will automatically add the member here. Right? It will automatically add the member over here. So right now I, I just clicked on skip. That's why it has not uh, configured it. Otherwise, it will configure these values as well. Right? So this is the advantage of using Copilot within our environment. Okay, within our power automate environment. I have already shared this link on the chat, so you can refer to this. And here, what we're going to do is we are going to follow these steps over here. Request approval where a Dataverse record is being created. Right? So here, if you see, it is creating a complete approval flow, having condition, updation of a rule. So if it is true or false. Right. So what I showed you all was a simple. Two step or three step kind of process. Here you all can see a complete. Creation of a complex flow. And while we are doing it. We are supposed to specify name of the dataverse tables right and this is what we are referring with llms large language models right so it also creating a table for us it is creating relevant columns details for the same and we can utilize them over here so as you go ahead let's perform each of these steps and as an outcome of this You'll see the complete execution over here. How do we approve details? How do we send these values to the relevant Dataverse table? This is something that we are already aware about. That is creation of a resource and then saving it, testing it locally. So it, it's, it gives a complete environment over here <laughs> where you can perform unit testing and see whether your resource is working as per the requirement or not. Right. So all these things within a single member. Okay. You see this suggested flow descriptions. So what do you want to do? Right. So the moment you click on next. Request approval when a Dataverse record is created. It automatically shows you all the required steps over here. And this is what we are referring as Copilot. Your colleague, your friend, your assistant who works with you hand in hand and helps you create any such complex resource. This was a quick understanding of how one can leverage Copilot within our automate environment. This took us some time to understand and implement this scenario. I'm sure everybody is done with it.
let's proceed ahead. Let's look at the second important member over here, which is Copilot with Power Apps. Apart from business processes, even in case of UI UX development, here also we can leverage on benefits of Copilot. Before I get into more details of the same, let me share a link with you all so you all can go through these details. So if you look at your Power App Studio, even here on right hand side, you'll see a co-pilot component being added, which helps us create resources, which helps us ask for any kind of guidance that one would want, right? So in terms of working with screens, gallery, buttons, right? So if you want specific set of commands you want to try out, we can do that. We can type these commands, bulk editing, add edit or style a control. It can provide us guidance of how these things can be done, how these UI resources can be modified or created within our environment. Since I'm already inside the Power Automate, let me go to make.powerapps.com. Now here, within our Power Apps environment, let me hop onto my right environment here. Right, so similar kind of resource you all see over here. This feature uses generative AI, track sales lead, list inventory, manage inspections, right? So based on the natural language details that we have mentioned over here, it will automatically create a sample table for us. Now it again does not promise that everything will be as per your business. So you can go and make changes here. Right. Let's go ahead. Let's create this app. So while creating the app, if you want to make any changes, we can do that. So you want Canvas app, you want a model driven app. Right, we can mention that over here. So on right hand side, we have our co-pilot details over here. Let's take some time to load. So while this is loading, let us go back to our presentation. Now using this co-pilot within Power Apps environment, what it can help us do is it can help us gain insights. It, it may not be as elaborate as uh, Power BI, but here from a app creation point of view, right? Whatever Power FX that you would want, whatever uh, uh, controls or UI components that one would want, all those things we can build over here. And these resources will get built like how we see, how we saw right now. That is building app through conversations. So I want an app to track office attendance. I want to create an app for inspections, right? You get created over here. Along with this, the third one, you can have Power Virtual Agent chatbots, which are embedded directly within Power Apps. So as we go ahead, I'll show you this option as well. 
So you can have a chat like environment within your power app. I hope this is ready by now. Yeah, here it is. So I've got my resources ready. So add a text label, add a gallery, add an email screen. If I want to add a button. Yep, here it is. So you ask for it. It is done for us. Let's save this. Let's run it. Right, so you have your details over here. Yep, so here I can see my button, which I had added earlier. So adding any of these controls is possible over here. I'm adding a new screen over here. So if you see it over here, you have Copilot preview as one of the controls available here. Yep, here it is. So I can associate it with a specific uh, table or content which I would want. Here I am. Right, so it's actually a chatbot kind of a resource embedded inside our Power App environment, inside our Power App screen that we are creating. So from creation of Power App, that's one member. Second member is second member over here is adding these resources inside our screen where people can chat and get details about a particular individual. So here we need to specify appropriate ID, provide set of details over here, right? We'll have to refine this model. Right now, this model is not refined. We have just associated a data source over here. Inspection date, inspector name. And we can specify appropriate values over here. And once this is done, we should be able to see the relevant content over here as well. Right? So this is how we can add details within Power Apps. As we have done for Power Automate, similarly, let's do a lab for Power Apps as well. So which will be more connected, right? It will make more sense for us. Build an app to manage a real state showings. Let me take this to my environment here. Let's take a new app. So as we go ahead, we'll follow the steps given over here. 
to create the relevant resource. And this data that you are seeing over here, this data is pulled from LLM. What should be the respective members over here? Add a column to track client full name. Yep, here it is. It has added the client full name. So any other details? So earlier what we used to do is if anybody has worked with Power Platform earlier, we used to create all these columns, create all the values for it, right, through a model. Now all those things have been made simpler by using a natural language. Right, and we can perform these actions over here. By using Copilot. So once you have done with all the steps. Once we've done with all the steps. Go and create your app. And we'll see all the details that we have mentioned. Add five more rows of data. Right, so all these steps once you have done and once you I have skipped some of it right now because I'm running short on time. You'll be able to. See the contents over here as well. In the data section. So here is our information. Here is our contents which is being shown in the lab resource. We can modify data, see the contents over here, edit whichever columns that you'd want. Right. And here if you see, this is how you can make this resource as searchable. In my previous scenario, I didn't do that. Here you can make your resource searchable. And it can be searched even by using the co-pilot screen as well. Right, so you can go and edit details over here. Go to specific column that you'd want, change any kind of table properties that you'd want. Right, so all these things are possible over here. So let's just quick look in terms of how one can use Canvas app. And within this Canvas app, how we one can integrate the co-pilot resources for generating the members. I have already shown you about the UI, so I'm not going to it once again. Moving on to the next important member. So we have seen two important components till now, which is integration of our virtual agents. Sorry, my apologies. We have seen integration of Copilot within Power Automate, within our apps, right? What are the ways of integration and how we have seen the examples here? The third one that you have is our virtual agents. Let's take a look at this as well. What are the ways of integrating copilot um, components, copilot resources within our virtual agents? Like I mentioned earlier, Microsoft has renamed this lately, and now this is called as Copilot Studio. And as part of this Copilot Studio, 
you have lot of options available lot of components available for prompt engineering for gen ai and we can create we, we can use conversational boosters over here and get these llms from universities government agencies and there are many more such pre existing component uh, conversational components that we can use over here there is a separate license for copilot studio as well that one can leverage upon so if you look at your power virtual agent copilot core features over here right so you can generate topics from simpler descriptions whether it is whether you're looking at triggers phases questions and this was pretty hectic in the previous approach we can add or update any kind of content you can get these from existing members we can have summarized information using your json information or adaptive card information and some of these members can be made as part of the dialogue so if you see your uh, uh, open ai solutions or gen ai solutions right here we can generate these kind of resources and if you all see even from our previous scenarios we have used generative ai we are generating resources power automate resources power app as a resources specifically just based on the nlp details that has been mentioned let's take an example of copilot studio now for this member let's go back to our environment once again let me go to power platform here i have power virtual agents web dot power va dot microsoft dot com so once this environment gets loaded up on to your right dev environment where you would want to create this member you can add these resources into a solution say a copilot solution or whatever name that you would want that one would want to give yep so here we go let's go ahead create a copilot as suggested over here real estate booking service let's mention the url here power platform microsoft uh, power platform.microsoft.com right so i've mentioned the details over here okay so when you go to new topic here we are supposed to create it from copilot so here if you see the options available generative ai topics and plugins entities right so there are a lot of pre existing members over here
right? So here, if you see topic, create from description. Some of the uh, contents may have changed over here because this is a uh, this is an environment which is continuously getting upgraded. Create from description. So it, the earlier name was create with copilot. Let's mention a topic name. So here if you see, collect users full name, email address of the property, date, time of showing. So based on the information that we are mentioning over here, it will automatically create those set of topics for us. Right. So here, if you see, it has automatically added all the members over here. It has added the questions. So things have become much, much simpler for us. Let's go to the phrases. Do a edit over here. So if you have to change any of the contents. If you want to change any of the questions over here. We can do that. What is your full name? What is your email address? So if you want to modify any of the contents over here, Right, so whatever options one would have mentioned over here. So follow the steps being mentioned over here. Right. So here, if you see, add a question to ask the user its full name, email address.
update message and say thank you to user. Can you see this? You will get back to you shortly. So if you want to add any specific details, you can mention update the message to say thank you to the name variable from the previous node and proceed to whatever message you have typed over here. Right? Based on that, we'll be able to get the new component being created. Can you see this? Thank you, full name. You can check the resources over here. Right, book a real estate showing. Yep, so you see, what's your full name? Email address. Address of the property. We can check for the relevant value over here. Right? So we can specify the state, street, city, pin code, right? That's a format over here. And once we mention that, we can get the address details over here. So once you are done with the details over here, we can add appropriate members. How do you extract those values? Add a question to confirm if, you, if the user information is correct, yes or no, right? And once you have done with that, then you can go ahead and enter the values over here, full name, email address, right? Address. What date and time do you want? And then you finally receive a message over here. So this is how one can go and create a Copilot Studio by using the existing models, the existing set of resources. Now one of the older components that we may have looked at earlier, right? Is usage of AI Builder. 
right? There's a complete learning path that Microsoft has added over here, which one can look at from perspective of GPT based technologies. So when you are performing a query here, we can associate a GPT member over here, create a text with GPT, and this is now part of your AI builder. Now, when we are creating a prompt, here what we can do is we can extract the information given inside the text, create a prompt, what contents or what information one would want to specify over here. Okay, what response you want to generate and all this content can be created by using the GPT. I've also shared this link on the chat window. So each of us can try out these resources. See the steps over here. Now, as, as part of this uh, GPT that we are doing, right, and integrating with Outlook, we want to primarily generate a content, generate a resource over here automatically. This entire email content that we have, this should be using some of the pre existing parameters, right? Please add the following real estate showing request. Put it on Teams again using Copilot. Get the approvals verified by using the Teams environment or Teams resource. Right? So this is another important member. So AI builder you all must have used in past. Along with this AI builder, we now have the GPT introduced over here. This is an important aspect. Now the core purpose of this GPT is how one can integrate Microsoft Azure Open AI service, Open AI resource over here. And using this member here, we can have our GPT models trained on the large body of contexts so that the uh, easier way of conversational AI, this is more a conversational AI that we are creating, conversational resource that we are creating. So based on the English like language or a common languages being used by people, we can generate information, generate resources over here. And if you all see the previous instances that we have worked with, you all must have uh, got a fair amount of idea how this can be done. I already showed you all the entire demo of how GPT can be added using the AI builder. So in today's session, the core focus has been understanding various aspects of infusing AI and Copilot within Power Platform solution, where we have seen integration within Power Automate, within Power Apps, right? Along with this, we have seen integration of Copilot within Microsoft Copilot Studio, how we can integrate those members, and finally, adding intelligence with AI Builder and our GPT resources. Right? So, the last reference link which I have shared on the chat window encapsules all these steps that we have mentioned. What I have not discussed about is how do you use Canvas apps to get data from Excel because we didn't deal with the productivity tools from uh, Microsoft 365 perspective, Copilot perspective. But from Power Platform components, we have seen all the options available. I hope you all find this session uh, informative and I went through these steps a bit fast. So make sure you all go through these details in depth and 
complete all the labs over here. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks for attending the session. If you have any 